In this lecture, we will migrate the remaining standard components to a standalone component and we will learn what adjustments we will have to make to make routing work with the standalone components. And we will also learn how to implement lazy loading when we have only standalone components in our Angular application. And let's start with the about component and let's switch it to a standalone component. For that, all we have to do is we have to simply add the standalone property and set it to true. And this about component, we are referencing it in our app route module. Now here, we don't have to make any changes. Once we have converted this about component to a standalone component, in this route which we are creating for this about component, we don't have to do any changes. And you will also notice that this home component is already a standalone component. So for that also, the way we are defining the route is same. So we don't have to make any changes here. With this, let's save the changes. And if we go to our application, the routing should still be working. So if I go to home page, we can see the home page. If I go to about page, we can see the about page. And if I go to courses page, we can see the courses page. So here we just converted this about component to a standalone component. And the standalone component, it is working with the routing which we have defined here. Also, let's say we want to load this about component lazily. So this about component, the code of this about component should only be downloaded when the user navigates to about page. For that, doing that is very simple with standalone components. All we have to do is instead of using component, we can say load component. Okay. And when we use load component, just like how we are using this import function here, in the same way, we will use the import function. Okay. And here, actually, we need to use a function. So we will use this error function syntax. And then we will call this import function. There, we will specify the path of the about component. So from the current folder, we need to go to about folder. And from there, we want to go to about.component. And there, we have our about component. And again, this function here, it is going to return us a promise. On that promise, let's call the then method. And this promise, it will receive all the components which we are defining and exporting from this about.component.ts file. So let's simply call it as com for component. And here we'll say com dot. And currently in the about.component.ts file, we have only one component, which is this about component. So we want to access it and we want to load it lazily. With this, if I save the changes, let's go to our application again. Let me open developer console. Let's go to network tab. Okay. And let's go to home page. Let me clear everything here. Let's refresh the page. So the application will restart and all the bundles will be downloaded. So you see all the bundles has been downloaded for the application. But now when I move to this about link, it is going to download a bundle for the about component. So let me clear the console here and when I move to about page you will see a bundle for the about component has been rendered here so now we are loading the about component lazily so this is a new syntax which has been introduced with standalone components okay you cannot use load component property to load a standard component lazily this will not work with standard components it will only work with standalone components so this is an extra advantage when you work with standalone components. You can load individual components lazily when working with standalone components. And this is not possible with standard components. There, you will have to load a module lazily, even if that module only contains a single component, which we want to load lazily. Now here, using this load component, we are loading this about component lazily. But what if we want to load multiple components lazily at a time. So for that, we can still create a module like we are creating for this courses module. So we can create a module there. We can declare the components which we want to load lazily. Okay. So for example, if I go to our course route module here, we have two routes, one for the courses component and one for the featured component. And what we want is when the user goes to this courses page, we want to generate a bundle which will contain the code for both of these components. So when we move to courses component, it should generate a bundle and that bundle should contain the code of both of these components. So we can still do it using this module approach, 
but we can also simplify this process by using standalone components so for that the first thing which we will have to do is we will have to make this courses component and the featured component a standalone component for that let's simply type this standalone property and set it to true for the courses component and let's do the same thing for featured component as well okay once we have converted this featured component and courses component to standalone component what we can do is we can get rid of this courses module where we are declaring this courses component because since we have converted this courses component to a standalone component we should not be declaring it inside the declarations array so we can get rid of this courses module from here and we can also get rid of this course route module.ts okay or what i will do is i will simply rename it so i will rename it to course route.ts instead of calling it course route module.ts i'll call it course route.ts and now in this file we are not going to have this ng module so i'll remove it from here i don't want to have this class as well i'll remove it from here since we are not using this ng module we will remove this import and what we are going to do is here we are simply going to export this routes so i will simply rename this routes as courses routes courses underscore routes okay and we are going to export it now here instead of using this routes class we are going to use the route class and here this route this courses route it should be an array of route and to use this we also need to import it from angular slash router so i'll remove these two imports and i'll add that import here okay so here we have get rid of course route module and also the courses module and what we have done is here i have renamed this course route module to course route.ts but you could have also created a new file and deleted the course route module and in this ts file what we are doing is we are defining our routes and we are exporting it now what we can do is let's save this file let's go to airport module.ts and there now instead of pointing to course route module we will simply point to course route because the name of the file from where we are exporting the course route is the course route so here the file name is course route.ts and from there only we are exporting our course routes and in there in that typescript file we don't have any course route module instead from there we are exporting a constant and that constant name is courses routes so these are the two changes we have to do here let's save this and now what it will do is it will load the components defined in this course routes lazily and in the course routes.ts file we are simply defining a course route and we are exporting it with this if we go to our application the routing should still be working so if i go to home page let me clear everything here if i go to about page and if i go to courses page everything is working as expected so as you can see for the courses page the bundle is getting loaded lazily let me actually go to home page let me refresh the page let's first clear everything here let me refresh the page so when the application starts it loads all the required bundles let's clear it here now when i go to about page it should load the bundle related to this about component as you can see let's clear it again and if i go to courses page it should load the bundle which is required for that courses route so in this bundle we should have code for courses component as well as featured component now as the last step let's also make sure that this featured courses link works inside this courses component so let's go back to vs code there let's go to courses component and in here since we have converted it to a standalone component let's also use the imports array and there let's import router module why because in this component we are using router link directive so let's save the changes here so in the courses component.html we are using this router link directive and this router link directive is provided by this router module so to make this component aware about this router link directive we need to import router module in this component with this let's save the changes let's go to our application and now you will see that here we have a link and when i click on this link it will take us to the featured courses page 
as you can see and with this now our angular application only contains standalone components and directives here in this application we are not declaring any component or directive in any ng module so we also have less boilerplate codes we have one module file left which is this app route module where we are defining the routes for our angular application but this one we need here and we are making it available we are making angular aware about these routes in the main.ts here by using this import providers from function and passing this app route module to it okay but in the next lecture let's also see how we can get rid of this app route module from here so as we have learned before we use standalone components in order to get rid of any ng module in our angular application in this angular application we have already got rid of many of the ng modules many of the module files but currently we have one module file left where we have defined our routes so in the next lecture we will learn how we can define and use routes in an standalone angular application without using a module file okay let me remove these two import statements from here because we are not using it and let's also remove this from here let's save the changes and this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day